Right, what is going on guys? So my most popular video was a Premiere Pro CS6 tutorial. Now I wasn't that big a fan of it because it kind of dragged on a lot and I didn't really get to the point. It, it wasn't a very successful video in that respect but people loved it, they keep on commenting on it and I want to do a new one with Adobe Premiere Pro CC. So this is the Creative Cloud version, the newest version, the kind of subscription based one and I'm going to give you a basic walkthrough and color grading session for this program. So to make a new project, we're going to click on new project, funnily enough. Right, let's click on that and we need to make a project name. So I reckon fun stuff will be good. So click OK and it will go into the program. So it looks really blank right now and that's because in CC, different from CS6, it kind of starts without a sequence, which means basically it's blank. So to create a sequence, I'm going to go to File, New and Sequence. And for my camera, I used a Nikon D3100. So I'm going to use a digital SLR 1080p, 24 frames per second preset. So this is for cameras like that Nikon camera I used, the um, Rebel T2i, T3i, T4i, T5i, the very popular cameras in this kind of respect for filmmaking, and those kind of cameras, D800, D5100, D5200, all these cameras, that is the one that most people use. Now if you've got a different camera, say like a Red Epic cinema camera, it's about £50,000, yeah, you can use 5K footage, you'll be using that, but I doubt people using this tutorial will need that at the moment. But if you're using a point-and-shoot camera, we're going to be going to the DV NTSC widescreen 48kHz. That will be what you'll be using. That's a safe option for small um, standard definition cameras. But here we're going to be using this one. If you want to get more advanced, just check your settings and check the frame rate. This is the frame size or the pixels. So that's full HD. And that all looks lovely. It's going to click OK. And you see now it's opened out and it has got more features. So we have the timeline here. This is where you're going to edit, cut, and kind of align your clips. You're going to sort them out on this timeline. That's what that's what's used for. And um, this is the preview window. When we've got a video up, you'll be able to see it and preview the video. Funnily enough, yeah. So this is the effects bar and so on. But we're going to kind of hurry up a bit. So if you click on the project um, project bin, I suppose you call it, and right click and import, we're going to find our footage. So I'm sure you know how to use Windows Explorer. Yeah. OK, so we're going to find the footage. This is mine, shot on um, that camera I told you about, Nikon D3100 in Bruges. This is the famous boat trip which goes through the city on the canal. It's fantastic. and. Well, I wanted to edit the video for it. So what I just did there, without telling you, it's very naughty of me, um, using the plus and minus keys, you can zoom in on the video. Just It doesn't change the clip duration. It All it does is just zooms in. And you can also use this tool here to do exactly the same thing. It's quite important just to be able to see it. It's not getting too small, you know? So this red line, this is going to be where you skip through your clips, like that. If it's at, if it's really slow at this point, head over to here and make sure the resolution is at lowest. That helps your computer kind of process the video preview and not get bogged down. Now, if it isn't playing at all smoothly, then that's about as good as it's going to get. So I'm sorry about that. Now then, I want to find the start and end point of my clip. So say if I want to start it here, just when the boat comes in, I'm going to either click from the start and drag that in and that's cut it or control Z will go backwards by the way or I can hit C to get the razor tool up and click where I want it to cut it split it in half you see and we're just going to highlight the section we don't want and click delete on our keyboards now it's very important that you see there's a blank space here you don't want that you want to drag the clip back to the start again and same if you want to edit the end of it so I want it to stop there, just drag it back again and that will cut it. So you can see what you've done there, 
that's lovely. Now I shot this flat on my DSLR, which basically means I've made the footage deliberately dull and colourless so I can change it in post, which was what we're doing right now. And um, this is just a general, it's good practice to do this. And I'm going to show you what I do. So if we go to effects panel and video effects, now this is the thing. I use Magic Bullet Suite to um, sharpen, denoise, and so on, as well as color grading. Um, so I'll be using Colostina 2, so just click and drag over onto the clip. But if you don't have that, because it does cost, you're going to have to use Color Correction, scroll down, and the Fast Color Corrector. But it's very, very similar, just it looks different, okay? so. We haven't put that on, we've just used the Colostino one because that's what I prefer. Scroll down, you have a good look at that. That's what we'll be using. And again, really recommend this one. It is a really good program. I prefer it for the inbuilt color correctors. It's, it's just nicer. And um, Philip Bloom also uses it for his color correction, which is always a good sign. Good old Bloomy. Eh? So we're going to use this to brighten the colors up and make it look realistic because right now it's just really dull so there's lots of different things you can do but what I normally do and what is good practice is to do the general taking the shadows just click and drag taking the shadows to the blue section now it may be a bit slow but that's fine you just have to live with that I'm sorry taking that to the blue okay it may have got darker don't worry about that at the moment using the mid tones taking that to the warmer tones so you like yellow orange red like so and you can leave the highlights if you want to I normally do unless say if you've got a white wall and you want to change the color of the wall and um, that you'd be using the highlight tone for that but for skies you want to keep it a normal color and um, that's just a general rule that I keep to but we'll just leave it at that for the moment now also you see it still is dull isn't it it's, it doesn't look normal so we're going to take up the saturation just by clicking and dragging. Now I'm going to take all the way up to full, like that. There we go. Um, but also, it, it doesn't look very contrasty, it still looks flat. And most people, to add contrast, will pull down the shadows like so. Now, that's not the way to do it because if you look, it actually crushes the detail, it crushes the shadows, in fact. Then you lose detail there, which is really bad, it's unprofessional. So what I do, and what the professionals do, is you take down the mid-tones, like so, just only, only a bit, like that. Notice it gets darker, that is fine, because you then correct it using the highlights, like so. So use the highlights, and we're just purely using it to get the right exposure. Now be careful not to clip any of your highlights, which means basically don't have it too bright because then you'll lose detail in the highlights. Okay so that's looking a lot better now and if you want a comparison of how it looked before just go back up and this normally shocks people, it shocks me because you kind of forget about how it used to look and next to the color scheme there's an FX button. Click that and that's what it looked like when we started. Quite amazing isn't it? Tick it and that's where we've got to. So it's it's really quite nice. Um, if you do notice, say if we, if you wanted to zoom in on the on the picture, just check things. Go to fit and choose your zoom percentage. I'm going to choose 150, and click the H on your keyboard to pan around the image. So I just want to check something here. You see, that's a shadow there. It's a blue shadow thanks to our color correction. That's fine. But if we toggle this off, we have actually lost the detail. There used to be bricks there. We, can't, we don't want to lose the detail, so what you can also do is bump the exposure up in the shadows a bit and see that's coming back again quite nicely and we've got the detail back from how it used to be. There we go, toggle, it's back how it used to be now. So if you want to get back to the same zoom, go back to fit and I'll toggle our settings back on again but we have lost a bit of contrast. So remember what we did to add contrast? Simply go to the mid-range and take it down again. And that's, we've still got the full dynamic range 
and it looks lovely. Now another popular thing that people want to do is make it super widescreen, so i.e. black bars across the side, or the top and bottom. Now in my last tutorial I mucked up because I told you to get a printout of black and white bars and simply put it over the top. That was a load of rubbish, I'm sorry for that, and people keep on asking, I'm sorry, leave it, okay? If you want to add black bars, go to File, New, Sequence, so remember we did this before, and go back to your preset again, but then go to Settings, and this is going to depend on the uh, resolution of your camera, but say if it's Full HD like mine, go to Horizontal, no, got that one wrong again, Jason, Okay, go to vertical and change it to 800 and notice when you click off it changes it to 12 by 5 that is anamorphic um, ratio film so that is basically anamorphic comes from an anamorphic lens which is stretched to the super wide viewing angle which is 12 by 5 so if you're using 720p I'd recommend 5 or 600 pixels vertical and same, you can, I'm sure you can work this one out, just get the right ratio, 12 to 5 is ideal. And click OK, and you notice it's add a second tab, this is sequence 2, that was what we worked on before, and this is the new one, see it's a really wide box there compared to the last one. So you think, well I don't want to do all that again, that's fine, you don't need to. You just click, copy what you've just done here, Go to sequence 2 and use control V on your keyboard to then add it back in, in again and you see it has now made that widescreen which is lovely and also if you go to motion up here, expand that, you've got room to crop it a bit. So there you go, you've got a better view now. One more thing, if you zoom in again, remember how you zoomed in, go to 150, that's what I normally use and the details actually quite soft that's because when I shot it deliberately took the sharpness down to avoid some complicated things which I'll talk about later in another tutorial but if you want to make the video sharper simply type in to the effects bar sharp and it'll come up with sharpen and click and drag that on and if you go down to the very bottom of the effects bin you can see it there and you can add a number. Now for this DSLR camera I normally use 10 to 30. Now it, if you add too much it will look quite horrible but I'm going to try 20 and there you go and you can see a very small adjustment remember this is a small preview so it's not going to make much difference but it has just clarified it you know it has just generally crispened it a bit more so this was a basic tutorial using Adobe Premiere Pro CC. That is all we've done. So if you take them off again, you can see the improvement gone from flat to graded and sharpened. To export this, which basically means to view it back as a video file, we're going to go to export. Well, make sure the clip is selected first. Go to file, export, media. Now I'm going to take you through this as well because it is part of the tutorial. This is where we render out as a viewable video clip. So format, simply go down and choose H.264. It is the standard nowadays and it is such a good system. And for some reason my editor has packed up. Why? There we go. Right, so it's come back now. Yeah, it's, it can pack up sometimes. <laughs> so use H.264. Like I was saying, it was, it's the standard and it just it's used for everything nowadays and it's a very good encoder. Now you can see it automatically used match source high bit rates. Select that and I'll take you through what it's done. It's basically automatically looked all the settings and matched it. So it's matched the pixels which is our widescreen. It's matched the frame rate and it's matched the um, aspect ratio of the pixels. Everything else as well. Now that's fine, you can leave that because it's done it correctly. But at this point, bitrate. Now this is how how much compression is done to the video. So if you want a really high quality look, then you can say add, you can give it 20 
megabits per second and that will be really really high quality compression but it's a big file size for this clip 15 megabyte for a six second clip if you want to upload to YouTube have still good quality but a small file size then five megabits per second is my personal limit for full HD video that is as low as I would go for full HD video and it still looks good like I said, like, please, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, I've got a page for that, I update regularly for that, and Twitter, I also tweet out things for the channel, and I will see you soon.